Hey fellas, me Trapper here. Today I'm going to do a quick video on some of the equipment that I use when I go camping and I'm doing a beaver job. Now, a lot of times when I get hired to go out to a place and do a beaver job, I've never been there before. A lot of times it's out of town or even out of state and you never know where you're going to end up sleeping for the night. A lot of times guys will tell you, oh I've got a cabin man and you can stay in the cabin, no problem. <laughs> you get out there and it is uh it's so run down and it's so terrible that I wouldn't put a dog in it. And then other times you get out there and the cabin is uh it's like a Taj Mahal, man. It's a first class place. So you never know where you're gonna end up. So over the years I tried a number of different solutions to have a quick, easy, and portable camping system. Now when I'm doing beaver jobs, uh it's usually in the winter time. And if it's not in the winter time, then the ground is going to be flooded and muddy. In other words, one of my criteria is to get up off the muddy ground. Hence, I like to camp in the truck. Um, I, I tried cots and everything else uh, and tarps. And I just kept coming back to I wanted to get in the back of the truck and get up off the ground. Now, a couple of solutions that you can look at. One is a topper. I decided not to go with a, a truck topper because it's a semi-permanent alteration of the truck. Uh, they're expensive. They can run two, three thousand dollars for a good topper. If you want a topper that's going to have enough space for you to sit up and get up on your knees in to change clothes and everything in inclement weather, you're going to have to have a big, tall topper. And in that case, it wouldn't fit in my garage. It was too tall to go in my garage. And plus, I just didn't want to. I just didn't want to sacrifice having an open bed pickup um, by putting a topper on it. So I ruled the topper out. Um, so the solution that I've been using for the last couple of years now is a truck tent. And this has worked out really well. This, uh, this is basically a tent that fits in the bed of your truck and it gets you up out of the mud. Um, it's fairly cheap. I think this was less than $200 uh, to pay for this tent. Uh, it works well. Uh, it seems to be pretty well made, even though it's made in China. Well, it isn't made in China these days. So let me show you uh, a little bit about this tent. Um, now, this is the right line truck tent. When it comes to choosing a truck tent, there's basically two categories that you need to decide between. One is a truck tent that's going to have a full bottom in it, all the way around, like a bathtub bottom built into the tent. I decided not to go with that. It was um, they're more expensive. Um, anytime you have a floor in a tent, it tends to hold the mud and the dirt and the straw or whatever. It's something else to clean up. And so I decided to go with the model that did not have a floor in it. The, the disadvantages to not having a floor is that if it's been raining or if you've had bloody animals or mud or anything like that in the bed of your truck, um, that's going to be exposed to you when you're camping. So there are pros and cons to having a floor and to not having a floor, and that's up to you. I went without having a floor. Now, things that I like about this tent is uh, it's really tall. You can uh, you can sit up in it um, and have plenty of headroom, a lot of headroom. It's got a little hook up there to hook a lantern or a light or a flashlight or what have you. I use an LED lantern. Um, you know, you don't want an open flame inside of a nylon tent or anything like that. It's got fairly good ventilation. You've got windows in the back that you can zip open. You've got some paneling in the top. And of course, the entire door um, is a mesh. It's just a, a no frills tent. You can see you got a pocket there and a pocket there. Um, not, not much to talk about. Now, the biggest thing that you have to be aware of when going with one of these truck tents is you have to order the right size tent based on the length of your truck bed. Secondly, these tents are not nearly as quick and easy to set up as a traditional dome tent. You know, a traditional dome tent, you just lay it out on the ground, run the poles through it, pop it up, and you're done. There is a lot more to this, uh, to this tent, I can assure you, when it comes to setting it up. As a matter of fact, let me show you the instructions. As you can see, the instructions are sewn into the stuff sack. And it is a good thing that the instructions are sewn in with pictures. Because you can see this is step 12 here. And you've got to have this strap, you know, passed over that strap. But that's not all. You flip this around. 
and there are even more steps on the back. Um, so you can see this is a, a pretty involved setup and the setup has to be done in the right order. You've got to have the right straps tensioned at the right space uh, and at the right time. And as you walk around you can see you've got straps that, that come around and hook like this. Um, you've got a, a weather tarp on top, you know, a rain fly that can be removed. So the pros to a setup like this is that it gets you up off the ground. You've got a good place where you can sit. Um, so you don't need to bring an extra chair if you don't want to. Uh, when the tailgate is down, you can put your extra gear underneath here to keep it out of the uh, dew or out of the rain or what have you. Um, and uh, it's a nice roomy tent. The cons to it, when the rain fly is on, there is virtually no ventilation in here. Okay, um, You can see the, the rain fly almost touches the bug netting up there. So there's not going to be any any ventilation going around when you've got everything you know closed up tight. Setup is a real pain in the butt. It can take you 15 minutes or so to get everything set up and tensioned up. So it's not something that you'd want to do when it's pouring down rain, okay? Um, so there are plus and, pluses and minuses to everything. Overall, I've used it for a couple of years now, and I like it. I haven't found anything that suits my needs better because, let's face it, when I'm on a beaver trip, Sleeping is something that you do at the end of the day. Camping is not the reason for me being there. So the next thing I want to show you is my little sleep system. First of all, you'll see I keep a, a pad here. You know, putting your knees on these tailgates, that can be hard on your knees after a while. And I like having a little, a little pad here. Just sort of cushions uh, and makes getting in and out of the truck easier, especially on my old knees. Now the first thing I use here is a quilt. I no longer use sleeping bags. I don't even own a sleeping bag anymore. Uh, every, every insulation that I use for sleeping is a quilt. And uh, this one is made by Arrowhead Equipment, made in the USA. Right there. And this is basically um, the top half of a sleeping bag with a foot, a foot box. And so the idea behind a sleeping quilt is that when you're in their sleeping bag, the insulation on the bottom is not doing you any good because it is simply um, simply getting crushed. And so with the quilt, it's a, a smaller, lighter, uh, more efficient system because you have the insulation on the top, you have your foot box, and there's nothing underneath you. The other thing I like about a quilt is it's easier to toss and turn, and uh, you don't have that uh, cocoon um, or claustrophobic effect. I use a full-length pillow right here, not a full-size pillow. You can see that thing's dirty. Uh, like I say, I've been, when you're out on a beaver job, man, you're getting in here, you're sweaty, dirty, muddy, and all of that. But uh, that's a good foam pillow because I think a pillow is critical to a good night's rest. And my sleeping pad that I like to use is a Cedar Summit. And this is a, a large pad. It's three inches thick or it's uh, advertised as three, it's probably two and a half in real life. But it's a nice, thick uh, uh, foam pad, um, and it's tapered. And you can see it's smaller at the foot and uh, wider at the top. This is a nice, comfortable pad here. And the reason that I got this one is what I'm gonna show you next. The other component that I carry is a US military, USGI, Gore-Tex bivy sack and this does a couple of things number one I may not always want to put this tent up in other words if it's going to be a nice night but we may have a heavy dew I can just sleep in the back of the truck and I can sleep inside this bivy cover and that'll sort of keep me dry keep the dew off of me keep a light rain off of me without me having to go to the trouble of putting the tent up by getting the tapered um, sleeping pad. That sleeping pad will fit inside this Gore-Tex bivy. Another thing that I can use this bivy for, even if I'm in the tent, is I will unzip this bivy completely and use it as an extra layer. And this will add about 
5 or 10 degrees of warmth to my system. So if I'm using a 40 degree quilt um, and I have this on top of it, that'll take it down to about 30 degrees. Plus you're going to get a little bit of extra warmth from being in the tent. So this is sort of a fallback thing here. It saves me from having to put up the tent and when the conditions are good. Um, if it does take a turn for the colder, I can use this to add some additional layering uh, or what have you. And the entire system, the tent, sleeping pad, pillow, Gore-Tex uh, bivy sack, uh, the quilt and everything, I keep in one of these Plano uh, totes right here, plastic tote. Uh, these things have the locking clips on them, like that, so the, uh, you don't have to worry about the lid blowing off as you're driving down the road. And as you can see, they're strong enough and tough enough that I can sit on them, uh, use them as a chair, so that when I go to cook, if I want to have a fire or a stove or something, I don't have to worry about getting any open flames or anything like that around my tent. I can just pull this out from under the tailgate, do my cooking, uh, have my fire, whatever I want and then push it all back under there. So anyway, this is the system that I've developed over time that has served me well. Truck tent, a nice comfortable pad, a nice comfortable pillow, uh, a sleeping quilt, not a sleeping bag, and some extra protection just in case I get caught short. Um, doesn't cost a lot of money, keeps you up out of the mud, because I tell you, um, a good night's sleep is important especially when you're out working hard there is nothing worse especially when you get older you get my age of working hard all day and then not being able to get to sleep or tossing and turning and just being miserable I'm too old for it don't have time for it and uh, this system works for me hope it was useful hope you find something um, that's thought-provoking in it and may help you we'll see you next time